So, yeah, I'm from Heads Finance and I just want to walk, uh, talk about two very easy incentive problems we see in the security market right now. Um, actually quite like easy to understand and actually quite easy to solve, but like weirdly enough, no one really does that so far, so we, we took the mission to do it. Yeah, so I call it two reasons why your project just keep getting hacked. Um, can we remove the cursor from the slide? Is that possible? Okay. So the first problem um, I want to talk about is the auditing market because if you're a new project coming into space, it usually looks like this to you. So you heard of like some of these famous names like Open Zeppelin that uh, you know is good, um, but after that it's already getting very blurry. And it's in this tier two and this tier three, there's like really amazing auditors, but as well really, really bad auditors. But if you're a new project, it's impossible for you to, to know which ones are good. So you have basically three options. The first one is to go with the tier one, wait six months for an auditing slot, and it makes you broke. Yeah, like most small projects cannot afford getting an open Zeppelin audit like three times a year. So the second option is you gamble on the tier two and tier three auditors. You can do some research, but basically um, it's impossible to even like find out or to verify which auditors are good. You can look, okay, which auditors audited hacked projects, but even if the auditor is not on that list, it doesn't mean that it's a good auditor. And the third option is you're just lucky. You know someone who knows the market, he will recommend you an auditor, and you can find a good auditor at a reasonable price. So what is actually here the problem? Like, why is it so hard to find a good auditor at a reasonable price? So the first big issue that we see is that the auditor doesn't actually share risk with the project it audits. So you can buy an audit, get hacked the next day, uh, the auditor will say, well, sorry for your loss, we feel sorry for you, but in the end, the auditor already has gotten all his fees, and you have all the financial damage, maybe your project is even dead, and the second problem is that even after that, we often see not that much reputational damage to, to, the, pro, uh, to the auditor. Like, there's auditors in the market, where I'm actually really confused why they're still in business, why they're still getting co uh, audit uh, um, like bookings and stuff. Um, so somehow it doesn't work with a reputational system either. And that's as well because it's like super hard to verify the track record. Like actually if you want to verify an auditor, you need to buy an audit, audit yourself, and then compare it to audit reports. I mean, that's basically the only way to do it, right? So how can we solve this incentive problem, because it's actually a very easy like information asymmetry and incentive problem. And we want to um, like show two concepts, how we think that is um, doable. The first concept we call skin in the game auditing. And so you buy uh, an audit from, a, from an audit firm, and that audit firm takes part of the payment, and you could go up until like 100% of the payment, and puts it into a bug bounty for a certain period of time. So let's say four months. So now the auditor shares the risk with the project because if someone finds a vulnerability that they have missed, they can claim the bounty, which is as well the payment of the auditor. So he loses all of his payment. So suddenly he has to have very high confidence in his own audit he has done because otherwise he wasted all of his resources he invested into auditing you. And he shares the financial risk with you because yeah, if he missed something, he's gonna lose his payment. And another really nice side effect out of that is that actually he is incentivized now to be engaged for the staking period. So if he uh, negotiates with you that you're going to be uh, staking for four months, in those four months he will make sure that you're safe because his money is still on the line, right? And we think this is a really beautiful model um, which is very easy to explain to people. And as well, um, we're already partnering with like seven or eight audit firms on doing that because it actually makes their product more attractive. Like they can go to a company and say like, listen, you maybe don't know us, but we have so much confidence in our own work. We will share the risk with you. You can feel safe going with us. The second big um, way how to solve this we see is audit challenges. And I usually talk about what I call the cutthroat model. So it's like very incentive based. Um, it's basically an open invitation um, for an audit. Everyone can participate, at least that's how we do it, and we do it on chain. And so that means that everyone can go through your code bec before, you, um, before you deploy this code, and um, there's no upfront cost, and you only pay if there's a valid finding. So let's say um, I'm, I'm an Anon auditor, 
I'm very good, and I see that you have an audit challenge running. I run through your code, I see an issue, I submit it via the platform and as well mark it in GitHub, and the first one who finds that finding will get paid. Um, the really cool thing about these audit challenges is that it actually attracts more people auditing your code. So in a like a traditional audit, you maybe have like three, four people looking at your code, depending on how, which auditor you go with. But in these audit challenges, what we see is like 30 to 40 people are hunting bugs. And obviously, like, like one very good auditor can uh, um, outcompete like 10 bad auditors, but still having more eyes on your contract increases the likelihood that everything is found. And then, really beautiful, um, Good auditors earn a lot. So we had, like, for example, one guy, he just got $25,000 for a single audit finding because that was the most important finding. And these bad auditors that are pretty good at writing beautiful reports but actually don't find the vulnerabilities, they walk uh, away empty-handed. And actually, this is how Midjourney interpreted this. Like, these are the poor guys walking away empty-handed, and these are the good auditors. <laughs> so, yeah. So. Now transitioning to another really big incentive problem that we currently see in the security market is it's really hard to being ethical as a hacker. So, in, sorry for having 21 data, but so bug bounties are a great tool, but right now a little unattractive. In 21, we saw that $3.4 billion worth of assets were stolen, uh, but only 10 million of bug bounties were paid out. And the reason for that is because being a bug bounty hunter is like really shitty job actually for the security researchers. Um, how the traditional process works, like I call it the Web2 disclosure process, is a white hat finds a vulnerability and he requests uh, a bounty payout from the builder. But in terms for the builder to know if the vulnerability is real, he has to evaluate the whole information the hacker has. But suddenly the builder realizes, well, now I have the information on the vulnerability and I still have all of my money so what happens often is the builder becomes a ghost. <laughs> so because he realized, okay, I don't have to pay out, right? I already have the information. And that makes the white attacker very unhappy. So it's actually like very easy to solve, right? So you just put the, the bug bounty into an escrow, into a vault. So suddenly you already, like we, we even do that on chain. You put the bounty on chain, the hacker can audit that the funds are there. And now when the builder looks at the vulnerability and now has the information, and he then as well tries to, to ghost the white hat hacker, the hacker suddenly has a new tool. And that is, he can call a decentral court and say like, hey, I disclosed this vulnerability, I have a timestamp, I have a cryptographic proof, please look at my evidence, and obviously the builder can as well provide evidence, like this is the description of my bug bounty, like this were the conditions. And as well, maybe he has an issue in GitHub that is older than the timestamp from the hacker, so maybe that's not a valid finding. But if the court reviews all of these um, evidence and comes to the conclusion that the white hat is actually in the right, they will make their ruling and will give the white hat hacker the money, which makes the white hat hacker happy. So why is this important? Yeah, like usually, like if you're now hosting a bug bounty right now, you would sit there and will say like, yeah, but now I give con up control. Like why would I do that? The the good thing about this is that you get more security out of your bug bounty because you attract more security researchers to hunt bugs. Because like traditionally, if you find a vulnerability in a contract with, let's say, with $50 million worth of assets, and on the other side, there's a bug bounty, which is maybe only $100,000, yeah? Most bug bounties are undersized. And now you say like, okay, I can steal 50 million, or I can claim a, a 100K bug bounty, maybe. Like 50%, they will pay me 50%, maybe not, right? Maybe. So. If we give those guys more job security and make it a better like, career option for them, they will do it. And then disclosure becomes more attractive compared to exploiting because they get legal money and they get it with like, a very high chance of actually getting it. And this just enables them to have this ethical career. Because maybe most people don't know that, but the top security researchers in the market, they're actually like, from very good universities. So like this meme of like, shadowy super coders, I love it. But a lot of them, they like went through like a lot of education and they want to have a good career. So giving them like this like ethical career option is actually really good for them because they don't want to live in the shadows. Yeah, so that's my short talk. Um, thank you very much. Uh, if you want to check out how we do that, you can uh, check out our website. And 
Thank you for your attention.